Hello, this is Craig. The new Unity uh, beta came out today. It's got the new Unity UI and the Unity event system, both of which are fantastic. So let's go ahead and use some of them. I'm going to teach you how to do them. Uh, you won't be able to get this project because it's full of assets that I don't have permission to redistribute, but it's very simple and you shouldn't have any problem following along. We're starting with this. This is just a floor with a dude on it. This is the default first person controller. You can get it with any Unity asset, uh, with any Unity install, and you can see that it works fine. I've amped up his speed and his x-axis movement a little bit, just so that, uh, you know, he doesn't feel like a sloth. Let's go ahead and add some stuff. We're going to create ourselves a little science fiction uh, setting. And I'm going to use the Hedgehog Science Fiction Kit because it is fantastic. Let's go ahead and take this one red light pillar and just drop it into the scene. Let's rotate it so that it's pointed towards us. Hmm. Yeah, like that. But it's quite dark, so let's add a light. Let's put it on top of that pillar, move it, expand it. We could turn on shadows, but I don't have uh, forward rendering turned on at the moment, and that's a pro-only feature, so I won't bother. This will work for us for now. We hit play, everything works. We've got our little pillar, we've got our light, everything is fantastic. Now let's do some UI stuff. We're in a first-person view, so we need to have a reticule. You absolutely need to have something in the middle of the screen to show you where you're looking. I always create a new canvas when I need to create a new canvas. It will create one automatically for you, but I prefer to do it by clicking on that because that way I won't screw up and have it add an object to a canvas it wasn't supposed to be on. So this canvas is in the game world, uh, represented by this giant box. I'm sure you can hide the giant box somehow, but I find it useful to have, so I leave it. Let's uh, create a image, and you can see it just got, gets added in right, right there. Let's make it small, like this, and let's change the sprite to, say, this pop-up highlight. And that'll give us just a little dot. You can see it being represented there. So if we hit play, we now have a little white dot in the middle of our screen. And that's really important for your first-person games. So let's go ahead and name this Radical and just stick it at the bottom. Uh, I guess it's already close to the bottom. The event system gets automatically added. You don't have to worry about that. But we're going to do some more stuff. We're going to do a lot more cool UI stuff. So let's add a new canvas. This one we want to be in world space. And it's in the same space in terms of being this giant box, and that's definitely not what we want. So let's bring it down to 0 .001, 0 .001, 0 0.001, and let's put it at 000. You can see that it is much more reasonably sized now, but this here is the pixel size. So having it 1150 pixels wide is actually pretty big. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make it 256 by 256. Now, remember that this is an object in the game world. And it can be moved around just like any other object in the game world. It can also be edited using this new button here. The, the problem with using that is that it changes the pixel size rather than the scale size. So if you have a specific pixel size you want it to be, that's not going to work. But this should be fine. Let's add it to our pillar and move it to 0, 0, 0. There we go. And let's move it up to the right spot. That's fine. All right, so let's add a button. So you can see that this button is showing its backside. This is actually important. If you have a canvas and your ignore reversed graphics is on, you will not be able to click on the back side of a canvas. So if you've got a situation like this, you either need to turn this off or you need to turn it around. To be honest, I haven't tested the, the ignore backside being turned off, so I might be wrong and maybe you just can't ever click on the back. Either way, now it's facing the right direction. This button, however, is definitely too small. 
let's click here. If you hold down Alt, you can get it to give you different sizes, and I can just click here, and it fills the whole the whole panel. Easy enough, right? Let's go down here to the text, and let's change this text to light. Easy, right? Let's make it bold and uh, 50. There we go. That looks pretty decent. Let's change the button itself. We got some colors that we can change. Let's change this from gray to yellowish, like this. And the highlighted color we will change to a reddish brown just to show that you're turning it off. Uh, that'll do. All right. So what happens when we hit play? Well, we can go over to the button, but our reticle isn't activating it. Our mouse is, see? We need to not do that. So that means we've got to lock the cursor, and that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and create a new uh, script for that. And we'll just drop that on the first person controller and open it. And here in update, we're going to say um, screen.lockcursor equals true. And that'll really insist on locking our cursor. And so when we hit play, we can see that we no longer see the mouse. But this isn't activating. That's because our mouse is not actually focused on the scene here. You have to click inside of that window in order for it to take focus. That's a downside of doing your all your work here in the editor. Uh, if your game was set to maximize on play or, uh, or some other option, you might not have encountered that problem. But just so you know, if you're having that problem, it's probably because your mouse isn't focused in the window. Uh, it's probably focused on the pause button or over on the inspector somewhere. Super common problem. Don't, uh, don't panic. Just move your mouse into the window and click. It's also not a problem that'll pop up on someone playing the game, uh, at least not on the download versions. It might happen in the browser versions, I'm not sure. Anyway, if it is a bug, I'm sure they'll fix it. It's no biggie. Oh, by the way, if you hold down right-click in the scene view, you can use Wasad to, to move around, uh, which is a really handy trick that I'm surprised how few people know. Anyhow, we can now click the button, but the button doesn't do anything. Let's make it do something. So we're going to add this on click list plus, and uh, what, what object are we going to modify? This point light, drop it in, and we're just going to turn it off. Light uh, enabled. And once again, our mouse is not in the, in the screen. It's over there on the right. Now it's in the screen. Doom. See? Turned it off. Unfortunately, there is no toggle switch for the light, so I can't turn it back on. Well, the way to fix that would be to create a custom script and attach it to either the light or the panel, your choice. Let's go ahead and do that. Create C Sharp script. We're going to call this the toggler. All right? The toggler we will put onto the point light, but it doesn't really matter what it's on, as you'll see in a minute. So the toggler is just going to uh, public um, yeah we're just going to go ahead and make it change the uh, sorry I'm trying to think of the best way to do this I'm just going to go ahead and make it a bool uh, currently on equals true and then we're going to have a public function a public void activate uh, except for that's not what we want, is it? I mean, how do we know what we're going to activate? We're we just going to like be this dot enabled equals currently on. No, no, no. That's not like that's not how we're going to do it at all. Public Unity event. Oh, but we have to include it. It's not part of the standard Unity engine namespace. Events. Public Unity event, and we were going to call this one toggle. Easy enough, right? So if we go over into this view here and we look at the toggler script, we can see that it now has a stop that annoying. You can see that it now has a toggle list, 
and we can add to that toggle list the light. And you can see that we can change it so that it toggles this script's bool enabled. Uh, not toggles, but uh, triggers this script's bool enabled and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is we are going to make it so that it says light.enabled and it turns to either off or on, right? But what we are actually going to do in here is we are going to have, we need to have a script to trigger it. Like, this is all fine and good, but no one ever calls toggle. Toggle is just something that exists in a world of its own. So what we need to do is we need to make it so that when toggle can be called, and we're going to do that by creating another uh, function. So the way we do this is we say currently on equals not currently on. And now we can actually just say, uh, you know, toggle dot, uh, what is it, invoke. But the thing is that this invokes with whatever the argument is. And in our case, the argument is a false. It doesn't invoke with, it doesn't invoke with whatever we want it to invoke with. It, invo it invokes with whatever we put into this inspector and it invokes with false, meaning it turns the light off. That's no good. We want it to turn the light to whatever it isn't currently on. So if we look at toggle and we look inside of it, we can see that there are a number of functions. But you see that there isn't any way to actually read all, the, all of these uh, listeners. I can't just look through it. Well, I can. Here it is target, method name, and event count. Now the issue I have is I'm not actually sure how to make it so that um, Sorry, I've actually never tried to do it this way before. I was going to teach you a, a simpler way. I'm, I, there should be a way to get the Unity Action um, list, but I don't happen to see it. There doesn't appear to be a Unity Action list uh, return on any of these. They're all like strings and objects and shit. Which is kind of annoying, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the solution, and that is to go toggle on and have another Unity event toggle off. And down here we say if currently on toggle on dot trigger or invoke else toggle off dot invoke now you might be thinking to yourself uh, oh no that's really flabby um, it, it, there are lots of ways to make it uh, less flabby but unfortunately the current setup for the unity events doesn't allow me to look at the actions involved so it's very difficult for me to do it with any kind of uh, finesse, given the restrictions there. So instead, I just bowl through. So here we're going to add in a point light and another point light. Here we'll make it uh, light uh, enabled. And here we'll make it light disabled. And down here in the button, instead of calling the light, we're going to be calling the toggler. And we're going to be calling the function trigger toggle. And once again, our mouse is not in this window, so got to get it in the window. There we go. See? Now there are, in fact, a lot of other things we can do with this. Um, we could uh, actually create an animation where the light turns on gradually. Uh, we could do all sorts of other stuff. But I wanted to show you the very, very basics of getting a Unity system working and how to use Unity events. Um, I'm sure that in the future, all of the functions here will, will grow and there will be different functions available. So if you're looking at this after 2014, if you're in 2015 sometimes, sometime, definitely consider this obsolete and look for a more modern uh, tutorial. But this should teach you the basics, and I hope you enjoyed it.